Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Learning Engineering Solutions. In this video, you will learn how to do sizing of a restriction orifice. Orifice plate is basically a thin plate with an orifice in the middle. The plate is inserted between two flanges of a pipe for providing restriction or flow measurement. Main purposes of the sizing are to achieve controlled and restricted flow, create a pressure drop, measure the volumetric flow rate, minimizing the bypassing to let down the steam and for the sampling purpose. The working principle of the RO is the Bernoulli equation and according to Bernoulli equation, when the area reduces, velocity increases and pressure reduces. Vice versa, when the area increases, velocity reduces and pressure increases. So this change in pressure upstream and downstream is measured to calculate the volumetric flow rate. These are the main factors which affect the sizing of RO. First one is the pressure drop that the required minimum thickness of RO device is dependent on the pressure drop across the device. It means if there is a high thickness of the RO plate then pressure drop is, will be the high and vice versa. The second is the flow rate. The restriction orifice need to be sized for normal flow rate as the pressure drop is dependent on the flow rate. Third is the sonic flow. A sonic flow generates high noise and vibration in the pipeline that may cause mechanical failure. And how it can be avoided that the maximum pressure drop across a single stage restriction orifice plate must be limited to the critical pressure drop. And the fourth one is the cavitation that Cavitation occurs when the velocity across the orifice plate changes with the change in pressure. So it can be avoided that the restriction orifice should be sized to maintain the cavitation index greater than 0 0.93. 0 0.93 is basically the critical cavitation index. And if our value during calculation achieved greater than 0 0.93, it means our orifice plate will be free from the cavitation and there will be the no cavitation phenomena occurrence. Cavitation index is dependent on the beta ratio of the plate. And in the next slides you will know that how these terminologies and the parameters can be calculated. Noise level is also one of the key factors. Noise level in RO can be predicted by calculating sound power generated due to pressure reduction. To reduce the noise in the restriction orifice, following options can be selected. First one, reduction of the pressure drop. Second, increase, increase of the number of the stages of reduction. Third, using multi-hole uh, RO plates. Fourth, optimizing the pressure drop uh, across each stage. And last one, increasing the cavitation index. Mainly there are five types of orifice plates, eccentric orifice plate, segmental orifice plate, conical orifice plate, edge orifice plate and multi-hole orifice plate. And each orifice plate is selected according to our calculations and the service of the fluid to meet the standard values. For example, the multi-hole orifice plate is selected for the liquid cases if during our calculations we face that cavitation index is less than 0.93 and there is a chances of occurrence of the cavitation or there are the chances of a sonic flow. These are the input parameters which required before sizing of a RO. First one, you must know which media will be used for the orifice plate, whether it is liquid or a gas. Second is the pipe diameter, third is the flow rate of fluid, fourth is up and downstream pressure and then temperature of the fluid, after that density of the fluid and last one vapor pressure. This is the main procedure for the uh, sizing of the RO. Basically to proceed the sizing of the RO there are different methods for the liquid and the gaseous services. For the liquid services, the first step is to calculate the bore diameter of orifice. And second, estimate the beta ratio and the velocity of fluid. 
and then we calculate the cavitation index and to sele and select the RO on the basis of our these calculations. For the gaseous service ROs, the first two steps remained same and additionally we calculate the K value for the calculation of the critical pressure ratio. On the basis of the critical pressure ratio, we check whether it falls in the sonic region or subsonic region. If ratio falls in the sonic region, then we estimate the critical flow hole diameter. And for the gaseous phase, we don't need to check the cavitation index. Proceeding on the sizing calculations for the liquid service, our first step is to calculate the bore diameter. This is the formula to calculate the bore diameter. Q is the flow rate and HU and HD are the upstream and the downstream pressure head which are calculated using our input parameters of the pressure. After calculating the bore diameter, we calculate the cavitation index by calculating the beta ratio and the velocity. Using this formula for the cavitation index, if the value is greater than 0.93, then our calculation has finished and there is no cavitation will occur. But if it value equal to less than 0.93, then cavitation will occur and we have to add multi RO. For the gaseous service, the step 1 will remain same. While step 2 is unnecessary, that is cavitation index, but the critical pressure ratio is the key determination to identify the sonic or the subsonic region. Below is the formula to calculate the critical pressure ratio and the critical flow hole diameter. First, we will calculate the critical pressure ratio by calculating the K value which is Cp over Cv. If the pressure ratio equal to less than critical pressure ratio, then it will fall the sonic region. But if the pressure ratio is greater than the critical pressure ratio, then it will fall the subsonic region. If our calculation show that the, uh, the region is the sonic, then we have to calculate the critical flow hole diameter as well using this formula. Now at this stage, how our sizing calculation has completed both for the liquid as well as for the gas service that we have identified the beta ratio, we have identified the cavitation index and for the gaseous case we have uh, calculated the critical pressure ratio and the critical flow hole diameter. So these uh, outputs are sufficient to share with the vendor or the fabricator for the required RO. Here we will compare our uh, required values with the standard values. That first parameter is that minimum orifice dia must be 2 mm for the clean liquid service and 1 mm for the clean gas service. But if our RO dia is smaller than the minimum orifice dia, then we have to add the replaceable strainer. Second is the critical cavitation index, which is 0 0.93, and our cavitation index value must be greater than of this value. And third parameter is the straight length that should be 3 for liquid case and 10 for the gas case. If your R uh, calculated values comply with these standard values, then your orifice calculations have completed and they are ok to pr further proceed.